All right, guys. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Another round. Come on. Come on. Another round. Ground and pound, baby. Another round. We're not wrestling flesh and blood, man. It's devils. Demonic. Spirits, powers. They're coming to annihilate us, man. Coming to wipe us off the map is their intention. God has different plans. And we go with God's plans, and we don't fear. We don't fret. We don't worry. We're like, even so come, Lord Jesus, come save the day, man. You know what he's really good at? The rescue. You ever been rescued by him? You ever needed help? And many times he'll wait till 5 o'clock on Friday, right when, you know, the people you got to pay that bill to is about to close, but he'll come through for you. You ever been rescued by Jesus? Other than salvation, that's the great rescue. We're about to be rescued physically by our Lord Jesus Christ. He's a rescuer, man. Prayer answering rescuer, our Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you know him this way. I hope you've come to know him. He wants, he wants you to know him. And so much of the church does not know God. And Paul and Peter told us, man, that's our purpose in life. Our existence is to know God come to know him better than we've ever known him. Mm, I pray you know him. Howdy, Rex. Rex says howdy. Hey, guys, make sure you're getting to know him, okay? Read that Bible every day. Be serious. Be so serious in, in reading your Bible, listening to his voice. Hear him as he preaches it to you. Heather says, hallelujah, your deliverance is at hand. Now go forth and conquer Amen. Conquering now and still to conquer, right at the king in his might. We're more than conquerors. He's fighting the battle through us, man. It is he who's winning our war. Amen. He's just looking for people who participate with him. Be obedient. Obedient friends. Obedient soldiers. An obedient wife. You guys know how great this world would be? If everybody would just do their part in rank, God, the husband, the wife, the kids, and everybody just stepped into that with joyful hearts, bountiful hearts, beautiful hearts, giving hearts, loving hearts. Wouldn't that be great? That can't even happen in the church. So many Jezebels running around in the church. So many husbands who are just unfaithful, sorry, can't even happen in the church. How's it going to happen in the world? But wouldn't it be great? And Jesus is going to make that happen when he comes back at the second coming. Seven years from now, seven and a half years from now, God's going to make it all right. Heather says, amen, Jesus fights my battles. Jesus fights all our battles. Don't you dare be out there trying to fight a battle on your own. And don't you get engaged in a battle that is not of God. You will lose. Okay? You just say, Lord, you uh, guide my steps. And if there's a battle in my path, you fight my battle. And our battle is always with demons. Now, here's the problem. Hey, Gary. Hey, fam. Praise the Lord, buddy. I loved your Catholic thing today. That was awesome. Uh, get over there to our Fault Line Facebook page. Boom. Jeff, buddy. Good to see you, dude. Guys, this guy, uh, God's done a great work in his heart. Okay? God's done victory in this guy's heart. Victory in Jesus. And he's learning obedience. He's learning to read that book. And he... Is a he can stand up and say obedience, guys, because for years he spent his life as a rebel, not even in obedience, not even caring what God thought, and now that's what he does. He cares about the Lord, loves the Lord, buddy. It's good to have you here with us, man. It's good to have you here with us. Hey, family. Hey, Alicia. God bless you, guys. Our battle. Here's what we should be doing. Let me let me share with you God's word. Okay, the truth. Let me share with you the truth. His heart. What every one of us should be doing, everybody who names the name Jesus Christ, we believe. Jeff says he has. Hallelujah. He has. God's good. Now, let's check this out. God's desire, his will, his, his word, 
The Holy Spirit's leading us all this way. If every true believer, born-again believer, would comply with God, not be obstinate, not come against Him, not rebel against Him, if we would all comply to the point to where we have died completely to ourselves, okay? This is God's will. But most of the church, the massive majority of the church, 90-something percent, does not do his will. They don't care about his will. Okay? And we're encouraging you to be a people who truly does care about the will of God, God's heart and desire in your life, his word in your heart. And you're going to purpose in yourself that you will not defile yourself with the king's meat nor with the portion of the wine which he drank like Daniel. You're not going to love everything on this planet and in this world. You're here and you know that death is a coming if the rapture doesn't come first. So we don't live for this world. We live for death and dying. We live for the eternal life after this temporary trash pile. Okay? Because this world is a trash pile. It is a graveyard that belongs to the devil filled with dead men's bones, stench, rottenness, putridity. Okay? And those of us with our eyes open and with a working nose knows this place stinks. And we don't want nothing to do with it, man. And we're saying, Lord, not our will, but yours be done. And he says, okay. Now, if the let's pretend for a second that the entire church would do this. Come to the conclusion that they hate this world. They don't love this world nor the things that are in the world. We've come to understand that if any man loves this world, its ways, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that's in this world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father and is only temporary, and God will burn all that up. But he that doeth the will of God abides forever. Let's just suppose we believed that portion of Scripture for a second and we all lived it. Here's what your day would look like. You'd wake up in the morning, die to yourself, have no desires. You will not have gone to bed last night angry, upset, with sin uh, riddling your heart. Okay, You wouldn't have done that. You would not have given place to the devil. We're told that. Neither give place to the devil. Uh, Heather says, eternity... Hey, Cush, amen. Eternity in Jehovah's presence is going to be so sweet. Peace and joy everlasting is going to be worth every lesson in this wicked school of ours. Amen. Every bit of it. For the joy that was set before Jesus, he endured that misery of the cross. He, he hated every minute of that cross becoming your sin. He didn't like that. That wasn't enjoyable. The physical pain was terrible, but that spiritual pain was awful. Something he had never known because he's perfect, the perfect lamb. And while he was on that cross, the father pinned all of your sin, my sin, the sin of the entire world. Pick, I want you to stop for a second. Instead of just hearing, you know, the blah, blah, blahs of Christianity, why don't you hear what I'm saying? Okay. While he was on that cross, all sin of all men kind at one moment was placed on him and the father in rage in wrath judged him instead of having to judge each of us for our own sin that was not enjoyable at all for jesus and he who knew no sin at that moment became our sin that we might be made the righteousness of god in him he took our sin so we could have his righteousness. That's how you're saved. You're only going to go to heaven if you believe. Not being baptized, not taking the Lord's Supper, not being a good boy and reading your Bible every day. None of those things will get you to heaven. The only thing that will get you to heaven is believing the story that the preacher just told you. Found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. The gospel that is preached unto us right now in the church age is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And he did this for you, and he's already taken care of all of your sin. There's not one that's left over and one that you got to work out and, and one that you've got to take care of and one that you've got to help Jesus with. He's, he's already suffered for all of them. Now, what you got to do is believe that. 
you place your faith in his death, burial, and resurrection, and the fact that he poured out every drop of blood in payment, and your price has been paid in full, and now your default can be changed from hell to heaven. Do you believe that? You must believe that. And then when you believe that, you'll be born again because you must be born again. Okay? And he takes you from sinner to saint. Takes you from hellbound, which is everybody's default. Everybody's hellbound until they believe. Not until they've done enough good works. All those folks are still going to hell. All those people that think they can help God, you're worthless, you're hopeless, you're without power. It was God alone who helped you. It was God alone who saved you. It was God alone, Jesus, who took your sin upon him to deliver you from this sin. All of it. Will you believe that? Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish in hell, but shall have everlasting life in heaven. Believe, believe, believe. Not of works of doing good, not of works of righteousness, which we do, but it's according to his mercy that he saved us. His goodness. His not giving us what we do deserve. Grace. His giving us what we don't deserve. And you are a wonderful poster child of God's grace and mercy if you've believed in or saved. Now go on and do something. Now, here, here is God's desire. Silly people, God doesn't need our help. Amen. We aren't help. Have you ever had a child that was said, I'm going to help you, mommy. I'm going to help you, daddy. And they were just in the way and making everything worse. That's anybody who tries to help God. You're making it worse, dude. Because the job is already done. When Jesus said, it is finished, he's God, guys. He cannot lie. So he meant it's finished. Quit trying to unfinish his finished business. Okay? Quit defying him and believe for once. Now, let's suppose that everybody here listening to my voice, you've come to that conclusion. You, you've, you've been born again. You're saved. Okay, I need a Savior. Jesus is the Savior. His death, burial, and resurrection. That's all I'm placing my faith in. Nothing else, nothing I can do, nothing religion can do, nothing anybody can do. Just in him. Now you're saved. You're born again. Now God's purpose for you is to live all of your life, 100% of it for him. You have no schedule. You have no hobbies. You have no likings. You have no sports. You have no TV channels that you watch. You're a dead man. Dead men don't do any of these things. Okay? So you start out with a slate of a dead man. Nothingness. And you look at Jesus and say, Now, I know that your desire, your will, your heart for me is to live 100% heavenly. To die to myself and to bring you glory and allow you to live your life through me. And I'll be an extension of your body. Each of us have something to do in the kingdom of heaven that's vital. Okay? And God loves it. He's looking at you. He wants you. He, he's rooting for you. Come on, do, do, do my will. Now, we have no will. We have no bucket list. We have no, our paper's clean. There, there is no to-do list today for us. We come to the Lord and say, Lord, what will thou have us do? What's on your to-do list for me? I want to do that. If everybody would do that, this whole world would be a whole different place. But we haven't done that. We love things. We love materialism. We love television. We love music. We love sports. We love hobbies. We love Christmas. You got to come to the conclusion that Christmas, God hates Christmas. Bible codes. Bible codes. Bunch of them. God hates that Christmas tree. He hates that idol. He hates you bringing those. Oh, I'm just saying. Plain text. Now, those abominations into your house. Last night's sermon, Baal, and Satan went, and in the English language, has all these preachers bringing Baal, Baal, you know, we here in the South say Baal. The Baal is the false gods in the Bible, Baal. It's Baal, Baal. So you got so many different kinds of Balaam, Balaam. Balim, Balim is many Baals, many gods, false gods of the Canaanites. 
And so we got football, ba'al, basketball, baseball, dodgeball, volleyball, and the list goes on. Soft ba'al. And these become our gods. These become our pastime. These become our bucket list, our things to do and our to-do list. And you're worshiping false gods. Then we got the Christmas balls that hang on the Christmas tree. And we brought that into our home and God is angry right now. He is so angry at the churches, so angry at the pastors and the staff and the deacons, the demon deacons. That's what we got going on. What if they were all turned to the truth, tuned into God, and turned on full blast for Jesus? What if this world would be a blowtorch of light instead of darkness? But the Christians have loved darkness just like the sinners rather than light because their deeds were evil. Their intentions were in opposition to God. God's holy, God's righteous, God is pure, and anything that is not of him or opposes him is evil, wicked, of the dark, because God is light. In him is no darkness at all. Jesus is the light of the world, and he's called us to be that light now. And most Christians, after being saved, after believing in his finished work, after his doing an awesome recreation in you, a permanent recreation, because we're once saved, always saved, then we want to go ahead and continue our own bucket list, our own life, our own Baal worship. And this is the massive majority of the church. And my plead to you, my calling to you, my cry out to you, is you have time to stop, to abort your Christmas. You have time right now to abort it. Because this is all, we, we say this, but I've got to say it. This is all for the devil. Christmas is for the devil. Christmas is for the Antichrist. Christmas is for Barack Obama. Christmas is for the United Nations. Christmas is for Satan worship. It's the Antichrist is the Christ child that was born on December 25th. J Jesus, if you were so sincere about his birth, that was back there on October 28th, guys. Where were you? Why weren't you paying attention? Because you don't love the Lord back with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? Because you care about yourself over what God thinks and says? Guys, he is enraged right now at the United States of America because of the failings of the United States church. The, the body of Christ is universal. We're, we're everywhere. But this westernized bunch in the United States, we really took... Jesus' Bible, and we bastardize it, bastardized it and made it something it is not. We have people, a massive majority of people, who are no longer looking for the rapture. For Jesus Christ to come, save the day, snatch us out of here just before he judges the world for seven years. Nobody's preaching that. Nobody's excited about it. When I was a kid, I remember Christians saying, when we was leaving church on Sunday night, you see you Wednesday if the Lord doesn't come. On Wednesday night. All right, guys, we'll see you Sunday if the Lord doesn't come. I don't hear anybody saying that now. We'll see you next week if the Lord doesn't come. Nobody's looking for the Lord to come. People don't want him to come. I'll see you next week. We got more stuff to do on our to-do list. And I'm telling you guys, you are in the middle. You've already come across the winter solstice. You are in the middle of the devil's territory. Now, God is the one who created the seasons for us, the times, the seasons, the moon, the stars, everything. But we live in a world that is under the sway of the evil one. Everybody here. <clears throat> Satan is the God of this world. That's why Jesus is going to raptures because time's up. He, he only had a time limitation on how long he, man, how long man could rule the world. Immediately, not too long after man was created, he handed the rulership over to the devil by sinning. Now the devil has taken over legally. The devil does everything legally. That's why America is changing all these rules and laws and things and making them in opposition to God. But they're doing it legally. 
Okay, And when Obama was president, he made it legal to spy on Americans. He made it legal to be able to lie to Americans. That used to be illegal, where the media could not lie to the people. Now they changed that law and said they reversed that particular law that said that and said, okay, yeah, uh, now we can lie. We, we can propagandize to the American people. We can tell them falsehoods. And it's all legal because Satan is a legalist. And Satan, his time is up. Man's time is up. And Jesus, that's what the rapture is. God's going to save his believers, Going to even the dead ones, those that have died before us. He's going to get their bodies, get us, call us up, and then he's going to bring judgment on the world. And then Jesus will come back at the second coming, physically, touch down on ground with you and me, the believer. And then he's going to take over the world. Throw Satan, Obama, the Pope, everybody in hell. Uh, Project Mockingbird, media control. Check that out, guys. Project Mockingbird. You'll see a hundred different newscasters saying the same lines in their script. The talking heads. And they're lying. The lying talking heads. God's sick of it, man. Because God's truth, and this really grates his personality. It grates his integrity. It comes against him, man, so much every day, every second, from every country. The United Nations, all the leaders of the world, they grate him. But he's been gracious to them because he gave them a time frame. His appointed time, his perfect time. And that's when he's going to rapture us out of here. And it's real soon, man. We got so many things pointing, guys. You be looking, you be looking for something negative to happen around Christmas and New Year's, okay? Something real bad. I don't know if that means the U.S. dollar becoming worthless at that very point. Everybody's quit using it. I rack along with other BRICS nations. That is their deadline. We will no longer allow a dollar bill to exchange for any kind of good or service in our country starting January 1st. Now, They've slowly have been weaning themselves off of that, but now the law states your dollar is trash here. It won't buy anything here. And that's going to come back to the Americans. And God, this sounds like God. Now listen up, guys. I don't have a thus saith the Lord on this. I don't have a Bible code. But I'm just saying, the Lord has been watching the greediness of America, the spending money that we don't have on stuff we don't need. Okay. There's a lot of people who have now had to use their credit cards just to buy groceries. Things they need. But there's a bunch of people out there buying things they don't need on their credit card and taking themselves into debt. Deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And this grates God and his goodness and his blessing and his promise of, my God will supply all your need according to his richest glory by Christ Jesus. Now, all these Americans have spent and spent and spent and spent and spent while the interest rates have gone up and up and up and up. So they're spending more on things they do need at the same time, still buying stuff they do not need. Christmas presents for people, for the devil. This is all for the glory of the devil. This has nothing to do with Jesus and his word. Okay. And so come Christmas Eve from the 24th until the 1st. I see something bad happening, and possibly it could be the absolute obliteration of the U.S. dollar. Why is that a thing? Because just in this last month, one point four million undocumented foreigners have come in, and the United States has paid for their plane tickets to go all over the United States. And most of those are warrior-aged men. And many of those are from the Mideast. And they're not telling you about it. All the Chinese. So many Chinese coming in. Asians, Chinese coming in undocumented. And they're paying for them. When they first get here, they pay for them. They get them hotels, get them out of the weather. And then they get them a plane ticket and fly them to wherever they're going. And you can bet it has to do with underground bases. The Trojan horse is here, guys. 
millions of them. This is just 1.4 million in the last month in the United States alone. Canada's got their massive amounts of these. And so on the given date, and here's what we're getting at. Satan wants to kill and devour the man-child before he is raptured. The Christian church, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ. Satan wants to wipe us out, and that is his intention. And he is loading. Remember all this happened in Europe years ago, coming through Germany and just wiping it out in the migration, they called it, of the Muslims. Nearly matches. Uh, Joe says 1.4 million immigrants nearly matches the 1.5 Jews in New York City. Best be ready for a rapture. Best be ready for a rapture, guys. Okay, and remember, it's all going to happen in the USA proper before it happens officially worldwide. The four sealed judgments, the four horses. It begins with Obama, and this whole American thing is going to give rise to Obama. He hates America, and he has desired for its destruction since before he was a senator in Illinois. His whole raising, his whole, the whole game plan for him, his whole being born and who he is and his bloodline, his DNA and his teachings have all set him up to be the destroyer of the USA, destroyer of Babylon, and to rule the world. And when he was a little kid living in Indonesia, he was being trained in all this, and he thought that he was going to be the king of Indonesia and told all his friends that, I'm going to be the king of Indonesia. This is a kid, a little kid saying all this. He did not know he was going to be the king of the world. Indonesia is just a small beans in the middle of that United Nations. And this guy is going to be king of the United Nations. And it's been planned for years and years. And while he was president, both his terms and during Trump, Trump was his term. Trump is Obama. He's just the other side. He had to do for Obama what the blue could not do. They had to bring in this conservative guy to get all the conservative vote and the conservative, conservative leanings to do everything that he did. It wasn't Obama and Biden that brought us uh, Project Warp Speed. Th th that was uh, Trump, guys. It wasn't Biden and them who declared we're going to make Jerusalem the capital and working towards a divided nation, a two, two countries. That was Trump and his son-in-law doing that. Two-state solution, Trump did that. But B B Obama couldn't have done that. So they had to bring in their other guy, the what do we got? 26 December? Oh, I missed it, dude. Oh, 26 December Boxing Day Tsunami plus 19 years. That was 2004. Uh, when that tsunami happened on Boxing Day, December 26. It was 19 years is the 26th this year. Add 140 days to that and you get April 8th. The eclipse. The bullseye. Good numbers there. Cush says... I put up pics of Obama and the two Rena kids at Epstein Island. Wow. Okay, we'll check that out. You guys remember, uh, and Kush, you posted this, I believe. Um, both of Obama's children, Obama's children, their names, and then you spell them backwards, Natasha is Satan. Okay, but but you, you take both girls, Ma Malia or whatever her name is, and you spell it backwards, and you take Natasha and spell it backwards, and you remove four letters that spell Allah, and it says, the two girls' names combined, I am Satan. Allah, I am Satan. That's in the names of these Rena kids by Obamas, and Kush has pics of Obama and the two kids at Epstein Island. Yeah, Kim, good cop, bad cop. That's what's going on here. And so it's all Obama. He's the American Pharaoh. 
And his purpose in being the American Pharaoh is out of the ashes, the Phoenix will rise, destroy the USA, obliterate the USA. And they want to do all that before the rapture. But God's going to hold them back. He's going to hold them back. Hold, hold, hold. And the devil knows that he is being restrained. And then God's going to boom, rapture us, man. And that is the trap. That is the snap of the snare. Bam! And everybody snared here who wasn't saved, who wasn't born again. And that's happening right here in 2023, which on God's calendar ends May 22nd of 2024. We will have been raptured by then. And the devil, devil wants us all dead. And he is loading up the United States with all these foreigners to kill us, the saints, before the rapture. But God's not going to let him do it. And they'll still be here to kill all the leftovers. And that's where your four horses come in. That slaughter fest, man. Demon possessed slaughter fest. By a bunch of people who hate God, who don't believe in God. And those who, like Obama's children, Allah, I am Satan. That's all the Muslims believe in. That is their heart. They are, they are prone and opened to demon possession. Now, let's see here. Uh, I trained a young lady from China the other day. She was given a free ride, education, housing, everything paid here in Canada. I was born in Canada, and I'm working my butt off just to get by. Lots of immigrants getting free rides here, and that's it. And what are they doing at the same time? Creating animosity, a hatred between groups. Divide and conquer. Uh, Malia and Natasha. Rex has it right here. Ma Malia and Natasha. You bring that up. You spell them backwards. A-I-L-A-M and A-H-S-A-T-A-N. Satan. And you get uh, circle Allah, A-L-A-H. And the leftover is I am Satan. Allah and I am Satan. Perfectly in those two girls' names. Kush says, yep, that was me. I posted that. I wonder if any of the mysterious celebrity deaths have to do with Epstein, like Bob Saget falling and hitting his head in the hotel. It just doesn't sit right. Uh, they, they are for sure um, sacrifices, blood sacrifice. It's time for them to die. And Saget knew it. And he was kind of mentioning that around white replacement theory right on. And it's time. Whitey has been ruthless. It's time for Whitey to die. All these Freemasons from Europe coming in, killing the Native Americans and the slaves and everything. And they've built up this, this animosity and hatred. And it's time, boom. Uh, Bob Saget was a terrible pedophile. Boom. There you have it. And they all were. And so, yes, uh, for the Epstein thing, yes, yes, yes. And uh, so I guess Epstein killed himself, right? Just kidding. Uh, watch video on SART secret of music industry. What is the SART secret of the music industry? Watch video on SART secret of music industry. Yeah, we'll watch that. We'll check that out. All right, let's get back to our original thought here in tonight's Bible study. Imagine if every Christian was a disciple. It would really bless us. And how the devil has won here, guys is most Christians aren't disciples. They live in the flesh. They live according to the flesh. They live in sin. They live according to devil doctrine, what they learn on TV, what they learn in the newspaper, and what they hear from conservative radio talk hosts. Tucker and the rest of them. Those guys have a victory, oh, victory in mankind. My Savior forever. It's not Jesus. They don't have a Jesus platform. It's you're going to have to defend yourself against these wicked, this, this tyranny bunch. You're going to have to defend yourself. Get yourself a gun. Get yourself some stuff, supplies and things. And it's never a rapture. Jesus is going to save us. You and I see all this stuff coming in. It's vital that I warn you and tell you and teach you that 1.4 million of these came in just this past month alone that they're not telling you about. Okay. 
You'll hear about the 82,000 that Abbott didn't want there in the Texas, the, the governor of Texas didn't want, so he shipped them over to Arizona. Now, that's good cop, bad cop, too. That guy's evil as the devil himself, playing the conservative red guy in a wheelchair. Evil. Why did he send them to Arizona? Because there's some deep underground military bases there they can hide in. Hello? Abbott is a hood cop. Yeah, he's scum. All right. So let's suppose that everybody was a disciple. If that were true, we would be fighting the devil's devils. We'd be fighting Satan's demons. But since they aren't, we have to fight Christian's demons. And they keep us at bay. And they keep us busy so Satan's devils can have free range. Did everybody just comprehend what I just said? When you live in the flesh, when you live after your own self, when you live after uh, everybody's philosophy and everybody's ideas, your own, and you've not died to yourself and you're not living unto Jesus, you're putting on the flesh, you live in carnality. And in doing that, you give demons rise in your life. And the devil has been weaponized by disobedient Christians and now it's your devil's that we have to fight. And meanwhile, the devil's devils are free to just do what they want, the devil's plan. Does everybody comprehend what I am saying right now? And you selfish, wicked, fleshly, carnal Christians have everything to do with it. We have to fight your devils. We have to fight your comments. We have to block you. We have to get rid of your unbelief in our world's Meanwhile, the devil's having a heyday. We have to focus on you. You've entered our territory. You've entered our property. You've entered our platform. And we got to fight you and put away with you and block you and get rid of you. And meanwhile, the devil's devils are having a heyday while the Christian's devils are having a heyday. And we're going to encourage you not to do that. So there's lots of Christians, but few disciples. That's it. And the word Christian means disciple. So there's a lot of believers. There's a lot of people who have believed. They're on their way to heaven. They've been born again. But the devil has gotten them with cheese in his trap. Or whatever they prefer. Peanut butter. Porn. Whatever. He'll bait you. He knows your heart. He's been watching you. He has sent demons along the way. They sure hated losing you to Jesus. But you're easy. They can work you. You don't read your Bible. You don't love God. You aren't excited about the rapture. When you, when you read that 1 Thessalonians 4, let's read that real quick. 1 Thessalonians 4. Furthermore, we beseech you, brethren, we beg you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus Christ, that as you have received of us, how ye ought to walk and please God. Most of the church ain't doing that. Most of the church is having Christmas. If you guys pray, but will you please pray, Lord, can you show us how angry you are, how angry Christmas makes you? Most people just don't know that he's angry and don't care, but he's livid. Bible codes. God hates Christmas. Hebrew and Aramaic. God hates Christmas. Well, we've shown you how you ought to walk and please God. We preach that every night here. Read your Bible, 10 to 20 chapters every day. Be ready to obey. Be ready to change all your wickedness, all the things you're doing wrong. Be ready to change all your pastor's wrongs that he's taught you and he's okay with. Don't you dare be okay with your past. My pastor does it. If God hates it, hate what God hates, man. For you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what? Or do you? Now we preach here. That doesn't mean you listen to us every night. Do you read your Bible every day? 10 to 20 chapters? Have you shut the TV off? Shut the world out? Quit going to movies? Quit listening to their storyline? We have Christians in the Watchman community who focus more on I pet goat too than the word. Now that's stupid. 
I Pet Goat 2 is telling us the truth of many things, but it was written by a liar. You know, Satan, that's his philosophy. That's his way. That's his way of doing things. And everybody, all these channels focus, I Pet Goat 2. Oh, I, I, I Pet Goat 2. How about 1 Thessalonians 4? How about that one? Keep reading. For ye know what commandments we gave you. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. You guys know that that word is porneia. And do you know that the Christmas tree has everything to do with fornication? And the wreath has everything to do with fornication? Did you know that? And the list goes on and on and on. You should have nothing to do with fornication. Yet you're out there having sex with the devil. Because you love your Christmas tree. Spiritual fornication. Spiritual whoremongering and whoredoms. Because you find every high hill. You find your ecstasy. Oh, so much joy when you dim the house lights and the Christmas tree lights are on. And you have the Christmas smells. And the old vintage Christmas songs playing. And you find yourself just in moments of ecstasy and joy and delight. Right there, while you're having sex with the devil, you fornicators, God hates fornication. Fornication is having so much pleasure in the bales, the balls, over Jesus Christ himself. Abstain from fornication, verse 4, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification. Living for God, being his disciple with a, with a fervency. Hey, we'll see you next week unless the Lord comes. That fervency has been long put out when cable television showed up on the scene and you were able to get more than three channels. That was the major, major change, guys, in people's world, day and night. That was the big difference in my youth group. I had to compete, smoke lights and mirrors with television. They could just stay home and watch a cool, cool movie and, you know. We don't compete with that anymore. We just come and say, thus saith the Lord, kids. You better believe. Super depravity in, in all the entire world. And people have not sanctified their vessels unto honor and sanctification. I praise God for you faithful, you nightly faithful. And those of you who join us later. I love Savio and Donabelle coming on. They're over in England, and they'll join us every day after the fact when they get up in the morning. They're five, six hours ahead of us now, about 1 a.m., 2 a.m. there. But they're faithful, and other people around the world, South Africans. We have some South Africans that are faithful, people in the Netherlands who are faithful every day watching this stuff. We praise God for you. You have a desire in sanctification. You have a desire to please God. You have a fervency and a fire in your heart to do whatever it is God wants you to do, man. Because you know time is short and you're looking forward to seeing him. Rex says, I used to love Christmas with cakes, pies, and all kinds of goodies when I was a kid. Now I have diabetes and can't touch sugar. That's the plan. Guys, diabetes takes 20 to 30 years to catch up with you. That's why these kids today are just pounding, pounding away. They're good, but they're on their way to dying. And that's where they all want us. And then you mix these Kim Trail cocktail in with it. Boom. Kim says, I'm just testifying today while cleaning my apartment. I listened to Jeremiah, Lamentation, Ezekiel, and Daniel on YouTube's KJV Live Old Testament. So many jaw-dropping moments. It's awesome. And they all connect. When you read them that fast together, it's all one unit. Hallelujah. God bless you. Honor the Lord with your body in sanctification, not in the lust of depravity. This world, every everything is depravity, guys. Everything is depravity. My YouTube. I cannot watch a YouTube without this, hey, get some chicks from Ukraine. And I say, what's a, report this ad. Oh, what's wrong with it? And there's nothing to report. I can't say, I, I'm not into this. This ain't for me. I can't do nothing about it. And it stays there. Naked chicks here, naked chicks there. Popping up all the time. Depravity, depravity. Now you and I are stuck with what are we going to do? And some of you, that ain't your thing. Some of you, it, like Rex was saying, is food. 
They, they, they'll have a food thing sitting there. Oh, let's watch how to prepare that recipe. And food, food, food. And it's the lust of the flesh, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life. And God hates it. And there's Josh. We got the Philippines joins us every day. God bless, man. Not in the lust of concupiscence as the Gentiles, which do not know God. And all these Christians, guys, people who will not make Jesus Lord. They're believers. They're on their way to heaven. They're just as evil as the world itself. And their demons attack us. And we spend our time fighting Christian demons and don't have time to focus on the devil's demons. And you guys are responsible for that because your sinfulness. You can literally, uh, literally listen to the whole Bible in three to four days if you listen to the audio instead of the radio. He, he's true. I know a guy that read it. He was sick, down with the flu, and read the Bible in two days. Now, I, I can't read that fast. I need the audio like Cush is saying. You can, guys, the entire Bible can be read in four days with the audio and your fast track listening washing of regeneration, the word, the word. But nope, you're going to watch that uh, that series. W what do they call it, guys, when they play a bunch of them at the same time? I can't even think of the, the lingo now. All weekend, you know. That's amazing. I never heard that before. Yep, very true, Joe. Very, very true. Continuing on here, we're in 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 6. Do not go beyond and defraud your brother in any kind of matter, man. Do, that's, don't bring your demons my way. But your sinfulness allows the devil to have rise in your life. And we have to spend our time putting out Christian demonic fires and have not hardly any time for satanic demonic fires. Do you hear me? They're the same fire. You are allowing the devil to be your spirit guide and your Lord, your Baal. Joe says, I read it cover to cover in 45 days since I started watching. Praise God. It's life-changing. It's life-changing, guys. And then you'll see all these other people that you believed were conservative at one time. How stupid and ignorant they are. Binge watching. There you go, Rex. That's what it is. And How about we just binge listen to Jesus? What else are you going to do? I say listen to him. Continuing on. Let's go on down to the rapture part, man. But I would not have you to be ignorant, verse 3. God does not want you ignorant. That's why we're on here trying to keep you from ignorance. We want you to read your Bible in 45 days or less. Okay, read your Bible, read your Bible, read your Bible. Every 30 days, read it. What else are you going to do? Sit around your Christmas tree and sip hot chocolate and listen to Bing Crosby in the dark in the beautifully lit Christmas tree. You bail worshiping fool if you would wake up and hear my voice. That is fornication. You have brought fornication into your home. God hates that Christmas tree. He hates that wreath. He hates Santa. He hates the reindeer. He hates it all, those smells. He hates it. He hates it. He hates it. But you don't care. And in your de defying God, your demons become activated in my world. And I can't stand it. If we would be unified in the Lord Jesus Christ and all of us together fighting the devil's devils, instead of us being forced to fight the Christian's devils, terrible. Verse 13, we're in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those that have died, that ye sorrow not, even as others that don't have hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again for us, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Scotty Clark, guys, that guy is a biggest fool, biggest retard, biggest idiot. He is the one who brought us the Revelation 12 sign and now says it wasn't a sign. He was the one who preached pre-trib, 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 and King James only. And now he don't even believe in a rapture. He doesn't believe that people go to hell. He has changed his whole thing because he is a vile, wicked man of his own heart, his own lusts. And he says that the dead in Christ are just dead in the ground. 
This verse right here just says that Jesus is going to bring them back with him at the rapture, and they're going to join their bodies. God will bring with him. Jesus is God, you know. Verse 15. Uh, Obama, Trump is the Hegelian dialectic. Two opposite sides of the same coin. They're the same guy. Saying, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. uh, -uh, uh, -uh. And they're both, uh-huh, right here in the middle. The Hegelian dialectic is they bring you a thesis, and then you have the other side, the antithesis, antithesis, and then their whole goal in the middle is synthesis, synthesizing both thoughts to the middle. This is what they wanted the whole time, so they bring this guy in to say, uh-huh, and they bring this guy in to say, uh-uh, until we can join forces in the middle, the Hegelian dialectic. Facts from Brother Rex. Amen. Controlled opposition, Heather. Amen. Amen. Okay, here we go. Verse 15. 1 Thessalonians 4. 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain living unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. We're not going to precede them. We're not going to go before them. And we won't prevent them. We're not going to keep them from rising. Scott Clark. He says they won't rise again until the end of the millennium, 1,070 years from now. Liars, 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 fighting off your devils, trying to keep my people guarded from your insanity, your lies, your demonic episodes. Christian demons, they're the hardest ones to fight. You got to fight everybody to tell everybody, stay away from him, stay away from her, don't have anything to do with them. And we're told to do that. You mark them and avoid them. All those guys on those uh, Watchmen channels, so dumb. Get your salvation right. They preach the salvation right, most of them. You still got that God a minute that says, just ask Jesus in your heart. If you're, if you're not sure that you're saved right now, you may have thought you were saved, but if you don't think you're saved, ask Jesus in your heart. That's not salvation. Salvation is my faith, my, my belief is if I'm going to heaven, I'm going to rest in the fact that Jesus has died, was buried, and rose again for me, and he paid the price in full with his blood, and the Father accepted the payment. Now he's waiting on me to believe, to activate that in my life. That's it. Believe the story. And these guys want to say it's all something different. And we got to spend our time fighting Christian demons. And if we were all together in unity, we could be fighting the devil's demons instead. Verse 16, for the Lord himself shall ascend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel, the Lord himself, guys. Uh, when I go places, I'll go to, you know, the grocery store and the manager d doesn't say, oh, 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 Johnny's here. Let me go out there and meet him. I can go to the bank and I, I just go to the teller and uh, the president doesn't say, oh, Johnny Watkins is here. Oh, let me go out to meet him because I am nobody to these people, but I'm everything to the Lord and so are you. And the Lord himself is going to do the business. He's not sending Michael or Gabriel or somebody else. He's not sending one of his great, one of the 24 elders to come welcome us home as a welcoming committee. He's coming himself, man. He's going to descend. He's excited. He wants to see you. He wants to be with you because his whole time living here was for you. His whole time in heaven before he ever created you. His plan was to come here and die for you. He's a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And all he thinks about is you. And all you think about is friends or whatever's on the comedy channel. He's excited about seeing you, and you're excited about Santa Claus. He loves you, and you hate him. I, w I don't hate him. I don't hate, I love Jesus. Uh, do you read your Bible? You love the Bible. Then you'll love Jesus. 
Is the Bible your favorite thing, your bread of life, your air that you breathe, the living water? Is the Bible everything, the washing of regeneration? Is it everything to you to make sure you know that you're right with the Lord and that you're in agreement with his word and you want to hear his word so much because you want to be right with him. You want to please him. You want to be his disciple. You actually want to be a Christian or not. The Lord's excited about you. Even the Christians, the believers, who deny him in practice. He's still going to save you. He's already saved you. He's going to save you physically in the rapture. Everybody gets to be raptured. Don't you want to be raptured loving him back? The Lord himself shall he send. He ain't sending uh, all the NAR people and all the charismatics. They've accepted this lie doctrine that there is no rapture that we ourselves are going to take care of the earth. We ourselves are going to get it right. We ourselves, the Christian bunch, are going to end. And these are all the false Christians. Th these are not saved people. These are all deceived people who think they're saved. Hillsong, Bethel, Stephen Furtick and his Elevation Bunch, and the list goes on and on among these charismatics. God TV. Hmm. TBN, all of them, false, false, false converts. Prophecy, whatever, watchers, Freemasons, hellbound. They worship Satan, the false light. And Jesus is so excited about coming to get you, so excited he's going to shout. You're over there shouting for your favorite team. Your, your college team's in the playoffs, and you're going to shout for them. You're going to shout for your favorite basketball team on TV. You're going to shout and shout and shout for demons, demon-inspired things, the SEC, football. Oh, I forgot one, Baal, Foosball. That's one, too. All these Baals everybody wants to serve. Football, softball, basketball, foosball. We're encouraging you to follow Lord Jesus Christ, one who loves you, a living God, not a demon-inspired thing. And you guys want to have your rebellious hearts, and you're still hooked emotionally and spiritually into Christmas. And the Bible code says God hates Christmas. He hates that Christmas tree. I can't even listen to Hillsong song. I used to be so deceived. Me, me too. Me too. I can't stand them now. I cannot stand that Christian genre of music. It is satanic from hell. I've come to recognize it. I've come to understand this. There's Mercy Me. Mercy Me pops up on my YouTube today. Uh, their new song, and it's all about Christmas. Satan, Satan, Satan. They're all deceived and deceiving. I can only imagine. For the Lord himself, verse 16, shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. Now, only one other time did this happen. Only one other time did this happen, and that's when he brought the word to Moses at Shavuot. The trump of God is the voice of God. It happened one other time, and it was about the word. Independent Fundamental Baptist started in my parents' basement in 1969. My charismatic brother and his family will be so sad at the rapture. He's 63, a wealthy guy, lives in Nexa, Missouri, lost as a dog's hind leg. Sad, sad. Many people confuse feelings and think that it is faith. Yep, all the emotional crowd, man, that's who the devil goes after. He ties into your emotions. Your emotions have nothing to do with faith. Nothing. Nothing to do with faith. It's faith, and then faith should produce an emotion. A change of emotions. A change of focus in emotions. 
Faith is belief, belief, belief. No emotion involved. You either believe it or you don't. Don't get jacked. Don't get quacked. Just believe. Believe. What does this say? We're in 1 Thessalonians. We're about to finish up this chapter. Verse 16, for the Lord himself, Jesus himself, is going to descend from heaven because he's excited to see me. Nobody else on earth thinks I'm that important. Thinks you're that important. They don't come out to you with a greeting meeting. And that's what all these NAR people believe. They believe that they're going to get the earth ready for Jesus. And then when it's time, they will welcome him to earth. But that's when the rapture happens. They, this is what they teach. He's going to catch us away. We're going to meet him in the air. We'll never go to heaven. We're going to meet him in the air and say, Lord, you'll never believe what we have prepared for you. Come check it out. That's what they teach, that they're going to get the earth straight, that they're going to welcome. They're going to be the welcoming committee to God. And this passage here tells us God is the welcoming committee. He's the one that comes down. Jesus himself will descend from heaven with a shout. And the voice of the archangel, the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, and then we'll go on into heaven. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. We'll be there for seven years while he destroys this earth and gets it right himself. And he'll be killing and destroying a lot of those NAR false prophets and believers. Sending them straight to the devil's hell in their deceptions. Because they didn't follow along in the word of God. They followed along in sing song and karaoke with the devil. And so shall we ever be with the Lord, verse 18, wherefore comfort one another with these words. Guys, if you would just become a disciple of the living God, you'd make all our lives easier. And if we would join arms, lock arms, and stand against the enemy in faith, in unity, in the scriptures, and make Jesus Christ our only God, and hate what he hates and love what he loves, woo! That would be awesome. We'd have some serious victory in Jesus, but we don't. He's going to have to come rapture us and come kill everybody instead. Do you believe the Bible? Or do you believe your just impersonation, your your emotions, your, your thinking of it, your, if I were God, I would do it this way. That's what all the false prophets have done. Don't join them. Why don't you just go with the written word, what God's already said, and believe it? You don't have to have emotion. You can, but you better believe it. Just believe everything he said and yield your members 100%. Will you please, for your sake, you'll be glad you did when you see him. They will be welcoming aliens instead. <laughs> right on, Josh. The big lie, the big deception. And because Jesus said you have not had a love for the love of the truth, you're going to believe this alien agenda. You're going to believe that they're from outer space and you're going to believe in spaceships. And... All you got to do is read Ezekiel chapter 1 to know that spaceships are real, but they're angels. They're seraphim, and they accompany the presence of God unless they fell. The fallen angels, that's what you'll be seeing in all this fakery that's going on. How does the NAR even explain the book of Revelation? It's allegory, same way the Catholic Church explains it. It's not real. It's not stuff. They don't know about Nibiru. They don't know where the, that the, originator of these judgments is right over our head right now and we're just waiting for the tail to come by and release its debris on earth new age new apostolic revolution uh both want to be their own gods that's it that's it we're gonna go in there and we're gonna conquer and we're gonna be great and we're gonna we're we we none of that we are dead i am dead I, my life is hidden in christ it's no longer I who lives. It's Christ Jesus who lives in me. And that's why I read the word and say, God, what are we doing today, man? Let's do it. I want to make sure that I do it. I don't want to do anything opposite of you. And we'll find ourselves messing up. And we see the great rescuer coming to save the day again. Because that's what he does. He rescues us. We don't get it right for him. He's excited to come down to sin and be excited about receiving us. And he's going to shout. He's so excited. He can't wait to see us. And his bride hates him and he just really doesn't want to see him at all. The massive majority. <laughs> Can you, I pictured this story as real, guys. 
And don't you be one of those. You be one of those who ascends with a shout. He's going to descend. You ascend. We'll meet in the air and we'll be shouting together for eternity. And so shall we ever, forever, be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Comfort one another. Will you please, for your sake and mine, and for the love of God, be his disciple. Your demons will be squelched. Your demons, their fires will be put out in your life. They will no longer have activity and action and control and power over you. Because you've quit living unto sinfulness. You quit living unto Disney. You quit living unto uh, Harry Potter and all the rest of those wizards that God hates in the Bible. And you'll put all them to rest and the Lord Jesus Christ will become alive in your soul and your spirit. And nevertheless, it's not me. It's Christ Jesus who lives in me. And you can say that. And when that happens, there's resurrection power. There's resurrection life. There's freedom. There's victory. But until that happens, you're going to make my life hell and the rest of us Christians having to put up with you and your immaturity because you will not grow. Immaturity is a wonderful thing if you just got saved. But if you've been saved 20 years, it's the worst thing that could ever happen to me. And we pray that for you. Catholic Church says it's a fairy tale with dragons and unicorns and sea monsters. Book of Revelation he's talking about. Rex is an ex-Catholic. Amen. He knows about the Catholics. Vondo! Amen. Amen, guys. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. Help us to live holy for you and to please you. Help us to walk holy and righteous and without wickedness in our hearts, without manipulation. Help us to totally die to ourselves and give us you and allow you to live freely in us and to work us in righteousness. What great joy, what a pleasure to have you as our operating system. We welcome it, Lord. We want, we want all the other dead and gone all the doctrines of devils just squelched out of our lives, put out, fires gone, and only you left. Regenerate our minds, regenerate our hearts, Lord. Thank you for saving us, making us born again in you. And I pray that everybody listening right now will have a desire to do away with their fornication, their lustful sexual sins with the devil concerning Christmas. And they'll wake up to the truth that you hate this so badly. Please, Lord, please. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen, guys. Love you tons. Love you tons. Yeah, they say the book of Revelation is a fairy tale. Many going to miss the narrow path. Yeah. So many blessings, guys. They strive to enter the straight gate. Just belief, man. Belief and walk. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen, brother. Praise God. Thank you for another amazing Bible study, JB and team. God bless you all. Thank you, Pastor. Catherine, love you, dear. You're welcome. God bless you. The woman with the crown is the princess. These guys are such idiots. These guys are so stupid. Guys, I love you. I'm thankful for you. And uh, get your shouting <coughs> ready. Me, 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 me. And get ready to shout with Jesus, baby. Let's do this thing in harmony. I love you. God bless you, man.